Our current neural network machine learning systems excel on a wide variety of tasks, such as speech recognition, compute, various computer vision tasks, and they've even been pushed with surprising success to tasks in areas like robotics and natural language processing, such as machine translation. But nevertheless, by and large, these successes are in the same overall area. That the successes are in places where we have these kind of stimulus response tasks. That a stimulus comes in and we process it to recognize something or to translate it or whatever. And these are tasks that are intuitive or, or instinctive for humans. They aren't tasks that require careful, deliberate thinking. So the question then is what about if we'd like to have artificial intelligence systems that can be used for reasoning? What about tasks that require more deliberate, conscious, and explicit thought? Arguably, in the early decades of AI, that these were actually the kind of tasks that people thought about most. So those might be a reading comprehension task but not one like some of our current question answering tasks, but instead ones like a middle school reading answering, uh, a reading comprehension task, where you actually have to understand the interactions and relations between the characters and events. Doing common sense reasoning and problem solving. Making explicit plans for a series of actions or playing games that aren't like Atari games, but are the kind of strategic board games that many of us like in our spare time. For tasks like these, we really need reasoning or inference. And so then the question is, what exactly is reasoning? Well, if you're going to ask the question of what is reasoning and the answer that you're going to give is neural networks, um, a really good place to start is to look at the paper by Leon Batu from 2011, right back in the early days of the current deep learning era. So Batu discussed how we could enhance deep learning systems with reasoning capabilities from the ground up. So he suggested that a good definition of reasoning was algebraically manipulating previously acquired knowledge in order to answer a new question. He says that, well, he points out that, you know, often when people say reasoning, they, their mind immediately jumps to logical inferences, but it doesn't necessarily have to be achieved by logical inferences. In particular, he suggested that there's a kind of continuity between the algebraically rich systems that you have in neural networks over to the kind of algebras that are used in places like logic. And so that if we could start down the road of connecting together trainable learning systems in the neural network world, that might lead us on the path to inference. But in particular, what he wanted to emphasize is that central to reasoning is having a system with composition rules so that we can guide the combinations of modules in a way that we can recombine information um, to do new inferences, recombine modules so that we can address new tasks. And so what I'd like to talk about today is some ideas as to how we might be able to make further progress along this road to having reasoning done by neural networks. Now, at the moment, the dominant viewpoint in, deep, in the deep learning community is to seek a learning device that is as empty as possible. The emptiness of the learning device is by and large compensated for by providing enormous amounts of training data to the system. And then often what people try to do is improve performance further by guiding how the device generalizes by the technique of data augmentation, which is effectively externalizing the desired inductive bias of your system in additional artificially generated training data. However, I feel that we should not be afraid of good inductive biases. Indeed, I think they're the key to producing good machine learners, ones which are capable of learning quickly and effectively. Indeed, if we look at what's been happening in deep learning, that I think most of the biggest breakthroughs in deep learning have come from building the right kind of inductive biases into models. We can certainly fail by using models with much too rigid structure, but we can succeed through the use of appropriate but flexible structural priors built into our models as inductive bias. These successes include the early success of convolutional neural networks, 
um, the development of attention, and also the kind of sequential and vertical gating that's used in LSTM um, for get gates and highway networks, all very effective structural biases. In most of my early work in using deep learning, I was a strong proponent of tree-structured compositional models. Um, I believe that they really give the right inductive bias for capturing the structure of human languages, but not only human languages. There are lots of other places as well in different problems where having a tree structure is a very natural and good inductive bias. And so these kind of models in the generic terms work so that they would take two vectors, initially word vectors, and build up a vector representation for the phrase. And crucially, that vector representation for the phrase was represented in exactly the same space. And therefore, that means this computational unit could be applied recursively to build up structures for larger sentences. The result of this composition captures how languages have nested phrases where the sentence meaning of the whole can be derived by composing together the meanings of the parts. As in this sentiment analysis example, the sentence starts off negative, there are slow and repetitive parts, but then it turns positive, but it has just enough spice to keep it interesting. And the tree structured model can understand this structure and understand that the whole sentiment for the sentence turns positive. Actually, what Leon Batu proposed was using exactly the same kind of tree RNN structure for reasoning. He proposed that the path to universal composition was an association model A that maps two representations into a new one of exactly the same type. And then that was augmented by a scoring module R, which is used to guide inference, the way in which you choose to combine together your initial axioms and your derived facts. And the result of using this kind of same composition module is that you would build up a proof tree. Now, on problems with unambiguous compositional structure, an inductive bias of tree structure really does win. And indeed, there are at least a couple of papers that have been presented at iClear which shows that. So one of them is on um, computer language program translation, and a second one by Ed and colleagues who introduced me, looking at whether neural networks can understand logical entailment. These are clear pro formal problems with tree structure, and in both cases, you've got big advantages from using a tree structured model over something with a simpler inductive bias. However, on the other hand, in my own field of natural language processing, it's proven really challenging to get sustained gains in NLP task performance from using tree-structured models. For various reasons, including the fact that tree-structured models are very GPU unfriendly compared to simpler models, but also because of their use of symbolic tree structure where you're making hard decisions and the, the sensitivity to pass errors, which is very easy to make with natural languages, um, it's been hard to get gains. So in this work, I actually want to pursue a different path to how we might approach compositional reasoning. It's possible to have compositional reasoning without trees. One alternative is to use an attention model inside a sequential model. Now, in a way, you could say this is almost trees by another name, since effectively attention gives us for free enery operations where we can feed in all the preceding nodes into our composition unit. But we still get the advantage that we have now soft weights on the different preceding nodes to decide how much to use these auxiliary arguments. And so this is a more flexible and more easily optimizable setup. But it's possible that we don't even actually have to do that. And in fact, the results that we have in the systems that I'll show later suggest that. Um, so a second alternative is to think that maybe our sequential neural networks can essentially do what logicians call currying. So it's an elementary observation of logics that if you have a multi-argument function, f of x, y, z, you can always transform it into a, another function, the curried function, where it takes one argument and then it returns a function which will take an argument and return yet another function which returns, takes a third argument and then will give you your result. And it's perhaps reasonable to assume that we can use sequence models to do precisely this kind of computation, taking arguments one at a time. 
Okay, so what is our goal in this work? So in this work, um, Drew and my goal is then to say, well, at the moment, the vast majority of machine learning, it's building these big correlation engines where you're learning any kind of association between what's in the input data and the results that you want to assign. We'd like to have a different kind of neural network design where it has an explicitly has a structural prior that encourages compositional and transparent multi-step reasoning. But on the other hand, We'd like to avoid the issues with something like tree recursive neural networks and to have a model that maintains end-to-end -end differentiability and is easily scalable to real-world problems.